In the headlines, police launch investigation into alleged killing of infant in Gombe State University. Bandits kill two, abduct seven in Kebbi State. Northern Coalition demands the prosecution of Gula killers in seven days. Also in the news, Moroccan foreign rescuers search for earthquake survivors as rescue window narrows. Hello there, good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Abdullahi Ahmed. We begin the update in Gombe as the Niger Police Authority has launched an investigation into the alleged killing of an infant by a student at the Gombe State University. Now, the female student who was arrested by security guards of the institution allegedly threw the day-old baby from a story building after delivering the baby at the student hostel in the institution. From Gombe, here is Ismail Ibrahim with the latest. This viral video captured the moment when authorities of Gombe State University arrested the female student who allegedly threw a day-old baby from a three-story building at the institution. The lady was said to have gave birth to the child out of marriage. Gombe State Police Command is investigating the matter. We are sad. It's not, um, it's not a good case to investigate. We don't want it to happen. And that is why the Commissioner of Police, because he's a father, he has daughters, he has children as well. So if anything of such happen, so people are there looking for uh, children, begging God, always praying for God to give them. We are investigating to find out what transpired and what happens from the first place that gets to the, that leads to this happening that we're talking about. The police also urge institutions to report incidences immediately for timely intervention. The command called on parents and guardians to monitor activities of their words. They should endeavor to involve the police. They should inform us on time so that we can be able to do our investigation together with them. Without their cooperation, we may not be able to do anything about it or we cannot, uh, we are not going to have uh, what we require to commence investigation. As it stands, details of the incident is still sketchy, but police authorities have promised to provide more information as soon as investigations are concluded. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. Now, two persons were killed while six others were abducted over the weekend when bandits invaded Kwarikwarasa village in Mayama local government area of Kebi state. The bandits invaded the community in the early hours of Saturday to carry out the attack. The governor of the state, Nasiru Idris, visited the community and assured them that the government has put necessary measures in place to avert further recurrence of the incident. He said his, his administration has given the security agencies all the necessary support and cooperation towards combating the criminality across the state. He said they will leave no stone unturned until they secure the state and make it a place where people will sleep with both eyes closed, peacefully cultivating their farmlands and go about their normal businesses without fear. Elsewhere, abducted former Soba local government council chairman and former member representing Mejana, Megana constituency, at the State House of Assembly in Kaduna, Kao Ibrahim Yakase has regained his freedom on Sunday. He was early abducted by suspected bandits who invaded his resident, residence at Yakase on Friday evening. Now, confirming the release via telephone call, Kaduna State Police Public Relations Officer DSP Mansir Hassan says the APC chieftain has regained his freedom as he was released without any payment of ransom. Kao Yakase is also the Kaduna State Organizing Secretary of the All Progressives Congress. Family source, however, said Kao Yakase's younger brother is still in captivity of the bandits who, also, uh, who was also kidnapped since last year. Another APC chieftain, Sabitu Ahmed, was also abducted about three weeks back at Garo Ward of the same local government area in Kaduna State. 
In other news, the Northeast Governors Forum has raised an alarm that bandits operating in northwest region of Nigeria are slowly extending their activities to the insurgency ravaged northeastern region. The governors said this during the eighth Northeast Governors Forum meeting held in Maiduguri in Borno State. The governors, in a communique read after the meeting, said the federal government needs to address the situation before it worsens insecurity across the region. The forum also noted that illegal mining activities in the northeastern region states constitutes a threat to the security situation, adding that it is a violation of Nigeria's Land Use Act. The spokesperson of the forum, Adamal State Governor Omar Fintry, said the forum wants the federal government to address the perennial flooding, climate change and deforestation in the northeast region. The forum is aware that some traditional rulers and other local authorities are conniving with the bandits, giving them shelter and cover to commit crimes within the sub-region. The forum unanimously resolved to decisively deal with any traditional ruler or community leader that is found to be harboring or conniving with the bandits. The forum noted with dismay the seeming neglect of roads and railway infrastructure, especially along the economic corridors that links the northeast subregion to the rest of the country. The roads from Inugu to Medugri is a deplorable state. Equally worse is the railway from Inugu up to Medugri, which has been destroyed. The forum is calling on the federal government to look into the situation and consider the reconstruction of this basic infrastructure along Inugu Medugri economic corridor. Now, allies of the late Ahmed Gulak, the former special advisor on political matters to ex-president Goodluck Jonathan on Sunday, have called on the Imo State Governor, Hope Uzadima, to initiate a legal process for the prosecution of the suspected killers of the deceased PDP chieftain in seven days. Now, the late chieftain of the, or rather, APC chieftain, who was shot dead by gunmen while returning to Abuja from Oweri in Imo State, on May 30th in 2021, said he was the chairman of the uh, APC committee, rather, that conducted the primaries of the Imo APC governorship election in the state. Daily Trust reports that the police arrested a suspect, Anosike Chinubi, linked to his death a year later. Now, the suspect, who claimed to be a commercial bus driver, said some gunmen forced him to drive them to where Gulak was in Oweri. But the late Gulak's allies under the aegis of the Coalition of Northern Social Cultural Organization tagged Justice for Ahmed Gulak movement said the silence of the Imo state governor in prosecuting the culprits would no longer be tolerated by the group. Addressing journalists in Abuja, the national coordinator of Justice for Gulak, uh, Zira Kwada, says the organization was shocked and disappointed about the government's lukewarm attitude towards the arraignment of the suspects in court with immediate effect. Now, he added that after the expiration of a seven-day ultimatum, they would have no option but to approach the court to compel the state government to do what's necessary. In other security-related news, the police in Anambra State on Saturday have killed one suspected kidnapper and rescued the captive simply identified as Abuchi in Orumba, South local government area of the state. The police public relations officer in the state, DSP to Chuku Ikenga, who confirmed the development, says good-spirited individuals alerted the police on patrol about the kidnap attempt. He said the police operatives were on anti-crime patrol in Obosi at about 7.30 p.m. local time on September 9th, were stopped by residents who informed the operatives about a kidnap incident. He said the police then trailed the kidnappers to an un uncompleted building surrounded by a bush in Umuata village in Obosi, where the exchange, where the police operatives exchanged gunfire with the kidnappers. One of the hoodlums was shot and arrested, while others escaped with various degrees of bullet injuries. Items recovered from the gang include one double-barrel pistol, two live, and one ex expended cartridges. In other news, a water vendor in Bauchi State, Umar Muhammad, is mourning the death of two of his sons as certified by a medical doctor at the specialist hospital in the state. The father of the deceased children hints the death to the current hardship being experienced in the country. Here's the report.
Umar Muhammad said poverty and his inability to treat malaria infection for his children due the economic hardship may be the reason of the death of his two sons. Muhammad explained that he is a water vendor for over a decade within Turun Gidadubu community, but he couldn't afford medical expenses after the children were diagnosed with malaria and other diseases. Muhammad, age 42, is married to Hawa'u and with five children, and is now left with three. He is living temporary in an uncompleted building. <laughs> The first son was ill and the younger one also ill too at the same time. So we went to a hospital, no result yet. And so we came back home, no money to go back, no money for food, regardless of the time. We went back again, just like that, and they refer us to a specialist hospital, and that was in the night. So they all died. Now their younger sister too is ill, and she's recovering now. Before the doctor even said this was another disease in addition to malaria, but despite all, they made an attempt to rescue them, but they couldn't help. They gave up around 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. respectively. His neighbor Zaharuddin Abdul Malik says the government should try and fix the country because many people are dying because of hunger and starvation. This malaria issue is a very, very important issue. And they are almost spending money in this, uh, this uh, HIV. The malaria is killing people and a lot of things is happening and people don't understand. The primary health care knows 80% of the problem in the hospital is malaria. Pregnant women with malaria, small child with malaria, the elderly with malaria, and the medicines maybe are expensive for some people, but at least the hardship is not easy. He said that it is time for a well meaning Nigerians should come to the rescue of the poor to complement the little the government is doing for the common man. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Now, the Nigerian Medical Association says its finding shows that Noah Kekere, who was arrested allegedly for removing a woman's kidney in Joss Plateau State, is not a registered medical doctor. A Joss-based businessman, Kamal Busari, had accused Dr. Kekere of removing his wife's kidney without his knowledge. Now, the victim, Kende Kamal, in an interview with Daily Trust, says her kidney was removed, was discovered rather missing at the Joss University Teaching Hospital following a complaint of abdominal pain. The police say they had launched an investigation into the matter. Now, the chairman of the Plateau State Chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association, Dr. Bamigang, Bap Bapigang William Audu, says records from the secretary shows that the suspect is neither a medical doctor nor a registered member of the NMA. He stated that this during a telephone conversation with Daily Trust Sunday. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up ahead after the break, we take a look at why court marriages are becoming appealing to young couples. Details of this and many more coming up ahead in just a moment.
Welcome back to the news update and thank you very much for staying with us. Here's a quick reminder of our top stories at this hour. The police has launched an investigation into the alleged killing of an infant by a student of Gombe State University. Bandits killed two persons, abduct seven others in recent Kebi attack. President Bolamet Tinubu is set to meet with authorities of the United Arab Emirates after his G20 summit in India. The Nigerian president has joined other world leaders at the 18th G20 Leaders Summit, where he called for global unity and cooperation in tackling pressing challenges, fostering inclusiveness and establishing a fairer world order. In a statement on Sunday, the presidential spokesperson, Ajuri Ingilali, announced that President Tinubu would meet UAE authorities during a technical stopover in Abu Dhabi. Ngilale says that the meeting will serve as a follow-up discussion to address specific salient issues within the bilateral relationship after conversations held during a recent visit by the UAE ambassador to the president at the State House in Abuja. The president is to address lingering bilateral issues while maximizing the opportunity of the stopover to equally advance his investment promotion objectives with high-level authorities in the public and private sectors of the United Arab Emirates. It is, however, not yet clear what issues will be discussed, but it may not be unconnected with the visa ban slammed on Nigerians by the UAE authorities back in October of 2022. Now, the ban was imposed shortly after the Emiratis suspended flights over its inability to repatriate funds from Nigeria. Last month, President Tinubu hosted the UAE ambassador to Nigeria, Salim Saeed al-Shamsi, at the Asurok Villa, directing that issues affecting relations with the Emirates uh, airline and issuance of visa to Nigerians be resolved immediately. Now, many couples are taking decision to tie their knot in a courthouse when they have low budget to accommodate extravagant wedding expenditures and ceremonies. Others insist on elaborate ceremonies during their marital rights. Now, in this report, Silas Lowen finds out why some uh, of uh, the intending couples in Nigeria are resorting to court marriages, and he explains the reason for the rising appeal among young couples in Yola, the Adama State capital. A registering a marriage in court cost just 2,000 naira compared to around 200,000 naira or more for a traditional wedding, even on a micro scale. While some are of the opinion that aside from its cost effectiveness, court marriage also serves as a security to the couple in the event of misunderstanding. However, others say with little amount of money, a partner will still be legally married by law. My one, I'll, first of all, I'll start with young people now most people you have someone you love and you want to marry but you don't have the resources all the resources you have it's kind of cumbersome because there are some people that you have to pay bright price first and the bright price is not something that is friendly then you still expect to host a big ceremony like the white wedding traditional marriage so people nowadays after the after paying the bright price the little they have first of all they consider the the cost uh, court marriage or should I say civil marriage it, it's more friendly cost friendly it's not that expensive it conserves uh, should I say it conserves uh, resources first of all when you go for a court marriage you are sure that your properties are secured in case of any um, circumstances or anything that happens especially in a family whereby maybe the husband is dead and the relatives of the husband would want to pack everything without leaving anything for the wife. They also believe that with the money saved, they will set new life together. Some people see it in a selfish, um, in a selfish interest. Like, okay, let me just go and marry this guy because he has money, he has all the properties, so that maybe I want to divorce. I might have a lot of things to go with. But apart from that, if there is more understanding between the couples between the couples then it is advisable for me i'll go for court marriage most most persons go into court marriage because of trust lack of trust they get scared my partner could could leave me so now dirty because as well court marriage offers legal security 
so people that choose it because now let us security on the fact that you cannot marry another person without officially separating from me it's we have to go through the same process of going to the court we now go to the same process as well to the court and okay see you fine we are now divorced can i go while getting married is a romantic event there is also a serious side to the union which many believe is critical stakeholders said sometimes planning a big wedding with a long guest list can feel overwhelming especially when you feel the need to please everyone salis lewan trust tv news yola now the rice processors association of nigeria has urged the federal government to enter a pact on rice trade with india to import two million metric tons of host brown rice for millers to stabilize prices of the grain across the country now the call comes as millers scramble for paddy rice amid a worsening shortage in africa's biggest economy that has sent prices to their highest level in over 15 years now the rice body says the move is necessary as it would help stabilize rice prices of a five kilogram bag of local paboid rice at 40,000 naira ensure survival of mills and a million jobs across the industry. According to the association, the country has over 100 rice mills with an installed capacity of process or to process over 6 million metric tons of paddy rice and it is expected to increase to 7.5 million metric tons in 2023 as more projects come on board. Now, the association added that to keep rice mills functional, a 2.7 million metric tons of paddy is required, noting that the current area under paddy cultivation is 1.6 billion hectares in Nigeria. Now, on the international scene, rescuers face a narrow window to save any survivors from the rubble of devastated villages in Morocco's Atlas Mountains three days after the country's strongest ever earthquake. The magnitude 6.8 quake that struck late Friday southwest of the city of Marrakesh has killed more than 2,100 people and injured more than 2,400 others, many seriously according to official figures. Rabat says it has accepted aid offers from Qatar, Spain, the UAE and the United Kingdom to quote send search and rescue teams. It noted that the foreign teams were in contact with Moroccan authorities to coordinate efforts and said only four offers had been accepted because of a lack of coordination of lack of coordination could become counterproductive to rescue efforts. In sports, after failing to make the Japan 2020 Olympic Games, the Nigerian boxing team, uh, the Nigerian boxing team is in Qatar, uh, Dakar rather, Senegal, fighting to win slots ahead of the Paris 2024 editions of the game. The road to Paris begins on Saturday in Dakar, where there are 18 Olympic quarter berths on the line for Nigeria. Now the Dakar Arena is hosting the Boxing Africa qualifiers that ends on September 15. Now this is the second qualification round for Paris following the European Games in June where 44 boxers earned quarter sports for the National Olympic Committees. According to officials in the women's categories, only the gold and silver medalists will secure s slots for the Games in the first five categories while only gold medalists will proceed in the middleweight category. Boxers who do not qualify for the quarter seats in Dakar will have another chance at the World Qualification Competition in Busto Arzizio in Italy in February next year and Bangkok in Thailand in May next year. Well, that about does it. A quick roundup of uh, the news update at this hour. Thank you very much, as always, for joining us. Feel free to follow us across our social media platform to catch up with more content and visit trusttv.com for more news. My name is Abdullahi Ahmed. As always, thank you for your time and company.